Welcome. Yes. And to toast it tonight, a wonderful evening. Got an impromptu speech from Verity for the first time, so we're looking forward to that. <laughs> but before we start, a couple of the house rules. Special request, if you haven't put an uh, indicator in, uh, in your name in, by clicking on those top three uh, dots, if you haven't indicated you're a guest or if you're part of Toasted or your role, please take a moment to click them, and to click those dots and indicate where you're from or, and, and your name, obviously. Tonight's uh, meeting, as always, is recorded so that we can put on social media for learning and education purposes. If you don't want to be that social media star, feel free to turn your camera off. When speakers are speaking, please make sure that you, you have your microphone on mute. To show applause, lift your hands, and please, please, please share comments in the chat box. We love to see your feedback. We love to see the energy that comes from all of you. The thing I love about Toastmasters, and especially Toasted, is we come here with our intention, our intention to show up with our courageous stories. And that's why at Toastmasters, we promise to provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. And with that, I'd like to welcome our president, Gabrielle. Thank you, Leo. You're always firing and bringing a wonderful atmosphere right at the beginning. Good evening, dear Toasted guests, members, ladies and gentlemen. What a wonderful evening to see so many faces, so many guests in our middle, whereby so many people are thinking already of holidays and you are here. So you're really showing up. Thank you for that. This evening, I'm going to wear two hats. The one will be the president. And the other one, Will be the Toastmaster, just that you know where we are. I would like immediately to jump into welcoming our guests because we have got so many here. And the first guest I would like to welcome, very important, is our area director, Terry Winchell. So Terry, a warm welcome to you. And and it's lovely to have you with us. It's an honor, especially this evening, you and Verity um, are crowning the gathering. And I will later come back to you when we talk about contests. But first of all, warmly welcome and I hope you will enjoy the evening with us. And then I see, I spoke to her already. We actually have two guests from the Caribbean here. And that is Adinga Findley. She is a Toastmaster in St. Vincent. And I saw uh, uh, another lady, uh, was it Chanel Paul? Those two ladies, can we please highlight them, if possible? And I would like to know, Adinga, you told me what brought you to Toastmasters and how you found us. And uh, perhaps you quickly can tell us how you found us and what made you come to us. Okay, it's a long, long cable which runs over to the Caribbean. So maybe we lost somewhere in it's the on deep mute. sea. On mute. Ah, okay. Um, Adinga? Oh, sorry. I am Adinga Finley. I'm a tourist master in the Caribbean, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I am currently on vacation and I am currently, well, I would visit the tourist master site every day and look to see which country is having a meeting that I can attend based on time zone. So 12 o'clock is quite a fine time for me. So I found this club and here I am. Wonderful, wonderful. Big round of applause to you. And Thank you. thanks for looking out for us and being with us. And is Daniel, uh, no, is uh, Chanel Paul, is she a friend of yours and in the same Toastmaster club with you or is she just by chance from the Caribbean? 
She is a friend of mine, but she is from St. Lucia. So I invited her. Ah, okay. So I think she's at work. Okay. So I'm sure yeah, she's, she's listening, but you are covering for both of her. And yeah. uh, then I saw Chantel Ashley. Chantel? Sorry, Can you please I'm unmute, to unmute myself? Yeah, okay. Good, Chantel. Good evening. Good evening. Oh. Evening, Gabrielle, and evening, everyone. I am a member of Lovenir Toastmasters in Johannesburg and area director for H3. And I've been meaning to come through and visit Toasted. I've been following Verity's journey with absolute rapture. So I'm really thrilled to be here this evening. Oh, thank you so much. And when I, I, I mean, when I look at you, I'm just, I'm in awe. You look so beautiful. And I thought you come from the Caribbean perhaps as well, because it just looks so colorful and uh, yeah, music and life. So wonderful, Chantel. Thank you for coming forward and visiting us. Lindsay Abrahams. Hi, um, thank you. I am Lindsay. I was actually invited by Chantal. Um, so this is my official first visit and I'm here to observe and just learn from you all. Thank you, that's as well wonderful. Thank you as well to Chantal that she has invited Lindsay and I hope you will have fun and inspiration with us this evening. And then Danielle, may we call upon you? So not only taking the ladies here. Hello, Hi, Daniel. I'm Daniel. How are you guys doing? I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I am actually gonna be moving to South Africa in a month to Cape Town. And so the, I just wanted to meet some new people. I realized I could join this one early online. And I'd also, as I was researching uh, Toastmaster groups, in South Africa, I saw that Verity has, you know, congratulations, had just won. And so I checked out you guys and decided to join, meet everyone. It's, wow, it's wow. also the middle of the day here as well. And uh, where are you in the moment? I am in Florida, in the US. In Florida. Are you a yes. surfer as well? I am not a surfer, no. <laughs> okay. So are you next, are you next month um, in, well, in December is soon. Uh, when are you exactly then in Cape Town? Oh, so sorry, January. It's, okay, I'll be good. in January 15th. So I graduate ah. from university here yeah. and I'm going to do uh, an internship there in Cape Town with a not-for-profit engineering company. And in what line? What are you studying? Civil, civil engineering. Ah, yeah, okay. Fantastic. We love new blood in Cape Town as well. And uh, we have once a month a hybrid meeting and I will capture you coming into our house and being part of a lively and beautiful environment. So really look forward to, to meet you soon, Daniel. Thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm very excited. Thank you. Lovely. And so now I need a little bit of help. Have I left anybody out? Please help me if I didn't. Ah. Cizito Mokete, hello. You are so good that you show up immediately. So, uh, hello, hello. Are you in South Africa? I'm just nearby. I'm in Lesotho. In Lesotho. No, we are really international. <laughs> and what brought you to our, what brought you to Toasted? Yeah, so when I was still Googling uh, about the Toastmasters uh, in South Africa, I found this one in Cape Town and I, I loved it because uh, on Mondays, I'm, I'm a little bit free. My schedule is not that busy. And then I saw that the time actually fits for me to join in. And if I tell you now that from next year on, we want to meet on a Tuesday, can you wiggle your life a little bit? Yeah, no, I'm flexible. I will see around. Uh, yeah. I, I tell yeah. you early enough so you will stay with us. All right. Thank you. Good. Thanks for coming. Lovely, lovely. Pleasure. pleasure. Good. Um, Nick, anybody else you would like to introduce to all of us? Okay. Just, uh, there is one guest, Julia, but she has ah, been yeah. before, but we can just... Yes, thank you. Yeah, Julia is my friend, Julia von Immenkamp. Um, she is German, and she just managed to get out of South Africa in time to do her business, which is travel, uh, travel business, to be back in Germany and work from there. So Julia, be so kind and introduce yourself just, and she won last time already the best speaker award. So at the best table topics award. 
So here is a, a thunderstorm coming. So Julia, welcome and just tell everybody what brought you and, and a little bit. Oh, fantastic. Uh, thank you for being, uh, being a guest with you. I'm looking forward to this evening. The last evening was just fantastic. I was completely inspired and um, happy to say I was able to actually experience Shireen in her um, element last week as a year-end function of women in tourism. She did a fantastic job and um, I felt so proud of her, how she did it. And it was really absolutely lovely. And I thought, wow, I can see the difference between how she actually emceed everything and all the tour guides. I'm a tour guide as well, and we talk a lot. <laughs> and um, it's very nice to see myself in the, uh, just upgrading my public speaking and bring it to the woman in tourism as well so that uh, we actually can drive this industry in a very nice uh, environment in the near future. So I'm very happy to be here with you. Thank you so much. Oh, wonderful. And uh, congratulations, Shireen. You are um, a fulgur in, um, you are like lightning as well. Wherever you come, you just take the hearts with you and convince everybody what you have to say is really precious. Congratulations to you as well. So the time has come, I hope I take the right hit, to be the Toastmaster. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Thank you, Mrs. President, for, for introducing um, this evening so nicely. Um, the Toastmaster has the role in the evening to be like an MC, introducing the speakers and give a little bit of Jews in between the lines. Uh, our Jews this evening is really a fantastic theme because it is showing up courageous stories. And who would not have to tell a courageous story either of their lives or other people's lives they know. I think life without courage is not possible and you cannot inherit uh, a co courage. It comes with your environment where you grow up and it is something which you can learn as well. Uh, I think the first thing then you have to learn is to overcome fear. And to start with a little story of courage, I would like to move my chair. It was in the year 1948. It was autumn on a soccer field in Germany when a group of teenage boys decided to beat up another 12-year-old boy who was practicing silently in a corner of the field. They didn't like him because he didn't look like a real cool soccer player. He was shy. He was fragile on his stork-like legs. Definitely not the guy to be with. They approached him slowly, very slowly. Hey, Wimp! You like to know what makes a man strong? There, out of nowhere, came a four-year-old girl, blonde curls flying, and she was flying towards them. She was barking. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Like the most vicious shepherd dog you have ever seen. The boys looked at her in amazement, looked at each other, shrugged their shoulders, a dreaded smile on their faces. They turned around, away from this eerie bark, barking little girl. This was my older sister, 1948. She was four years old. And the only weapon she knew to protect her 12-year-old brother was to use courage, to use that what was her biggest fear in life. And that was a barking and attacking dog. So fear had turned into courage and she saved him. They never came back because with this little blonde devil, they would have nothing to do. So this is a family story. My sister until this day, is a very sharp 
businesswoman, and my brother, now 85, is a very kind man. And to end this story with a quote from Nelson Mandela, our icon of courage, I wanted to say, or to repeat, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. I thought this wonderful quote fits quite good to my little story. And now I would like to hand over to a courageous evening and to courageous role players and introduce the first one to you. And that is the um and air counter. It's Lori Jimison. She is our BPE and she will tell you now what is her role for the evening. Lori, may I hand over to you? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gabrielle. What a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing very much. And it just sets the tone for the evening. So greetings fellow Toastmasters and guests. The purpose of the ah uh, counter is to note words and sounds that are used as a crutch or a pause filler by anyone who speaks this evening. During the meeting, I will listen for overused words, including and, well, but, so, and you know. I will also listen for filler sounds, including ah, uh, um, and er. I will also note when a speaker repeats a word or a phrase such as I, I, or this means, this means. At the end of the meeting, I will report the number of times that each speaker has used those expressions. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Uh, we can't You're hear on. you, You're muted. Gabrielle. Okay. And next I would like to introduce to you Nicholas Jackson, who is not only our grammarian and listener, but he's our VPM, the most important person. If you would like to join us, then please talk to him, send him a message. But now, welcome our Nicholas. Thank you, Madam President and Madam Postmaster. My name is Nicholas and I'm taking the two hats. I'm taking the grammarian and listening role. The word of the day is valor. I will post it in the chat box. The meaning of valor is to have great courage in the face of danger, or especially in a Toastmasters meeting. Yeah. As a listener role, I will identify phrases that our members or participants have used and then do a quick answer and question where you get to tell me who said the phrase. Back to you, Gabrielle. Thank you so much, Nicholas. And the next role is taken by our lovely Vanya. She is the timekeeper. Vanya, will you please describe your role? Hi, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Um, I'm the timekeeper today, and I will have a video background. Um, that has a timer and the screen will go green, yellow and red and for the speakers to keep track of their time. Five to seven minutes is for prepared speeches, two to three minutes is for evaluation, evaluations and one to two minutes is for impromptu speeches. Thank you. And I hope you have all seen that Vanya has behind her a tree. That is our tree of, um, our club promise tree, where everybody at the beginning of the year decided for a word, um, an, an adjective, a um, uh, characteristic, something he would like to learn during this year at Toastmasters, and he would like to personify some power he wishes on himself, some kind of courage, whatever. So this beautiful design of our tree of life at Toasted is that behind Vanya, and I hope you will see it later again. And I would like as well, our new members, once you are a member, to send your word, your personal word for the journey with Toastmasters to Vanya, so she can carve it, write it, paint it onto our tree of life at Toasted. 
Thank you very much, Vanya. And now I would like to introduce the famous Shireen. She's our first evaluator. Shireen, welcome. And will you please describe your role? Thank you very much, Madam President and Madam Toastmaster and fellow Toasties, good evening. And before I start off with my evaluation um, little piece, I would like to say to Jen, congratulations for coming with all your valor for your speech this evening. So this evening, I have the absolute pleasure of evaluating Jenneth Vasquez. I'm hoping I, I pronounced your name correctly, but Jen is going to be speaking. Vasquez. Vasquez. Welcome, Jen. And it's Vasquez Scouts, right? Perfect. Uh, so Jen is following the pathways of effective coaching. She's on level one, and this is her project two, evaluation and feedback second speech. So when we do the second speech, the purpose of her speech this evening is for, for Jen to present a speech on any topic, receive feedback and apply the feedback to her second speech. And the second purpose for her speech is for her to demonstrate what she has learned from her prior feedback with regards to her first speech. Jen, this evening, her topic is called the five pillars of wealth. And I'm so looking forward to evaluating you this evening. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Shireen. And Janice, I would like you now, uh, or hand over back to you to start with your speech with a slight correction for your second speech from wealth to the five pillars of wealth. I repeat, from wealth to five pillars of wealth. Janice Vasquez. I am now nervous because we have a lot of people <laughs> inside this group now. So um, please bear with me with my speech. And um, I was reminded earlier that um, I should uh, take note of the, of the rules for the speeches. So I just did it without, uh, I check a little bit, but I'm not sure if I have the right format of my speech. <laughs> Do you want to be rich? Oh, just a minute. Um, what is wealth for you? What if? What is the first thing would you do if you become rich? Or what was the first thing you did when you were when you become rich? <clears throat> Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, good evening. Every Sunday in Manila, I would go to church. The filthy Boni Street children, ages seven, ages one to seven years old, they would be knocking outside a car, hungry and begging. Uh, what I have seen in them were the hidden treasures due to the circumstances they lived in. Their gifts and talents will be wasted for the rest of their life if they were not given a chance. Each one of us has a specific gifts, talents, and purposes to share to make these gifts more valuable and to create a better world. If given a chance, these children may become inventors or great leaders. They may have talent that will inspire and change the lives of others. What great gifts would be wasted or would never be unveiled? In my heart, these, there is a burning desire to help these kids reach their full potentials and transform their lives. I believe you and I can help them if we are rich with the right resources. How do I define wealth? Over time with challenges, circumstances, and experiences in life, I gain insights into what wealth is. I call this pillars of wealth. Tonight, I would like to share with you what these pillars are and how they help and guide me in the journey of my life. The first pillar of wealth is my faith in God. My faith in God brings me joy, peace, and hope. I have spent decades searching for it, but I couldn't find it. I searched for it in Amazon, Shopify, Alibaba, and I ask my best friend, Google and YouTube. Every day I talk to Google. Actually, I talk to Google more than my husband. 
but Goldville could not, couldn't give joy, peace, and hope that I was looking for, but him alone. How do I find faith in God? When I was in college, I had a Christian classmate. She was depressed. She just lay in the on the bed and just sleep. I was encouraging her to come with me in the church to lift her up, but several times she rejected my invitation. Instead, I attended their church. I don't like their music because it was too noisy. But when the pastor preached preach, the wisdom I heard from my grandparents when I was a kid was in the Bible. I was amazed. Since then, I started reading the Bible. Every morning I seek the Lord in his word. I kneel down and pray. His word gives me joy, peace, and hope. If you too are looking for joy, peace, and hope, I encourage you to do the same. The second pillar of wealth is wisdom. According to my best friend, Google, wisdom is the application or the ability to contemplate and act using knowledge, understanding, experience, common sense, and insights to make, to make good decisions and right judgment relating to life. Naturally, humans are intellectual, very intelligent, but we all make mistakes. We still, and we still knowingly make wise and wise decisions. We want, we want when I want, when I want it. We fail to choose what we know what is good for us. For example, we trust the doctors with our health. I have noticed that some of the doctors are also obese and diabetic. They completely understand that eating unhealthy food will lead to sickness and disease. That's lack of wisdom. I believe that wisdom could protect you and me from troubles in life. The third pillar of wealth is health. Everybody feels good when we are healthy. Good health allows us to really enjoy life. A hangnail in my tiny finger or two will affect my whole life because it really hurts. When I see someone in pain who cannot walk, can't eat, because of disease or sickness, my health, my heart breaks for them. More so if they are my loved ones or your loved ones. Did you know that the total expenditure for health is 6.5 trillion? Yet the seven trillion dollars could not buy health. Having wealth, having healthy body, healthy mind are priceless. Live healthy, live wealthy. Relationship is the fourth pillar of wealth. We are happier and better people when we have good relationship with our family, friends, and society. We live a more fulfilling life when we serve others and are served by them. Our interdependence with others motivates us to take care of ourselves. One of my principles is <clears throat> if God blesses me more, I will bless others too. When I help my siblings or other people, I feel satisfied and relieved because their problems are solved. How do you feel when you serve others with your gifts, talents, and skills, especially when you are paid well for, uh, for your efforts? Notice that financial wealth is the last pillar of, on my list. It is the roof supported by four pillars. Financial wealth cannot be stand without faith in God, wisdom, good health, and good relationships. It is, a, it is like a roof without a house. I believe financial wealth is the byproduct of serving others. It facilitates me sharing with others. When I was living comfortably in Manila, my siblings would normally visit me and stay in my house. I wanted them to experience the comfortable life I was experiencing. I would treat them out to dinner, help them and others financially. Much more if we could do together when we are wealthy, we can help transform the lives of other people like those street children in Manila. With financial health, we can create jobs and help other people change their lives. 
we can invest in this calm that there will, there will be no load shedding. Thousands of reasons to be financially wealthy. In closing, what do you think you can contribute to the world when you are wealthy? I believe that with the right purpose of being wealthy, supported by pillars of faith in God, wisdom, good health, and relationship, together we can create a better world. I encourage you to watch Blindside movie. This pillars of this pillars of wealth relates to this movie, Madam Toastmaster. Janet, a second speech and your icebreaker from so much depth and wisdom shared and definitely those five pillars of wealth will be remembered. Your generosity to your family has taken all our hearts and you carry on like that to share. Thank you so much. And now I would like to come to our second speaker and that is Verity. I mean, no further, no further words are necessary. We welcome warmly our beloved world champion of public speaking, our ex-president, our friend, our mentor, Verity, with her speech, buy your ticket. Verity, buy your ticket. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, Madam President, woman of many hats. So I have a question and I'm happy for everyone to put their answer in the chat. And that is, do you like winning? It could be anything, a raffle, the lottery, the international speech contest. I see, yes, of course, yes, of course, absolutely. Anyone else here enjoy winning? Hell yes, Sharina, <laughs> I really own that. I love that. Beautiful. So, so all of us enjoy winning. Now, there is a story of a man who loved to win. And the thing he wanted to win most was the lottery. So every Saturday night, he would sit in front of his TV and he would watch with bated breath as they drew the numbers, only to realize he hadn't won. But the next Saturday, he was back there watching the numbers being drawn and he wouldn't win. This went on for months. Until one Saturday night in desperation and frustration, he looked up at the sky and said, why? Why do you never let me win? And a voice came down and said, you might want to, pay, to buy a ticket. So <laughs> in March of this year, I bought a ticket. I put my name in the hat for the Toastmasters International Speech Contest and I went on a journey of wherever it was going to take me. 35,000 other people also bought their tickets. But there are 400,000 members of Toastmasters, so less than 10% bought their tickets to see who would become the world champion of public speaking. Now, it is not guaranteed who is going to win that journey, but everyone who's entered is guaranteed a journey. And as most of you know, three months ago yesterday, I heard the life-changing words and the international champion, world champion of public speaking is Verity Price. It was the most extraordinary moment. I was in a room with 50 friends and Toastmasters. It erupted with joy that we had finally bought this title back to Africa for the first time that I got to be the sixth woman to ever win that title in 80 years has been and I think will continue to be extraordinary but none of it would have happened if I hadn't bought my tickets if I hadn't put my name in the hat taken a risk danced with the chance of failure to see what I was possibly capable of not only as a speaker not only as a toastmaster but as a human being stretching my limits and trying to become more. Now, this is not the first time I'd ever entered the speech contest. I've been a Toastmaster for 10 years. So the first time I entered, I entered with a very different attitude and still a bit of valor. And I had a lot more valor this year, but I, I entered with a different attitude because when I entered back in 2012, I thought it was a little contest that happened at our club 
And I thought, well, you know what? I'm actually a pretty good speaker. So I'll write my speech the day before. I'll arrive on the night. I'll probably win. I'm just going to be honest with you. That was the attitude I had. My sister, on the other hand, also a new Toastmaster, but a nervous Toastmaster, entered that contest with an attitude of, I want to grow. I want to stretch myself. I want to deliver the best possible speech I can give. So she started working on her speech the month before the contest. The night it got announced at a club meeting, she put her name in the hat and she started working on her speech. I just watched her thinking, shame. She is such a nerd. I can't believe she's taking this so seriously. I'll write it the day before and I'll probably win. On the nights of the contest, I walked into the club. I was chatting to everyone, feeling pretty confident. She was outside doing superwoman poses, trying to get her confidence up. And I still felt sorry for her because the last thing I ever expected to hear was in second place, Verity Price. My sister beat me. And she didn't just beat me at club and she didn't just beat me in this tiny little contest happening at our club. She beat me in something that I the next day discovered was an international speech contest. I was horrified. I couldn't believe I hadn't taken it seriously. She went on to win the area contest. It was the sixth speech she had ever given in her life. She was a new Toastmaster. Someone like Jenna starting their journey. She'd done six speeches and she bought her ticket and she put her name in the hat. After winning the area contest, she won the division contest. She was the first member from our club in 20 years to ever win the division contest. And she, from there, went to the district contest, 12 countries in Southern Africa, and she won. Third woman ever in history to win the Southern African Toastmasters contest. I, by that stage, had gotten over my jealousy of, of her beating me at club. <laughs> we, we'd become good friends again. I was working as her mentor. And I saw the effort that goes into preparing for a contest. I saw the obstacles of self-doubt and anxiety that she had to overcome with the help of a coach and a counselor. I saw the challenge of not only writing one fantastic semi-final speech, but writing a second amazing speech should she make the finals. I saw how she embraced the feedback that you need to take on in order to write a winning speech and how she leant into and learned from the success of previous world champions, watching every video she could get her hands on, seeing what are they doing? How can I apply it to my journey as a speaker? And in August, 2012, I got to watch online as she took to the international stage in the world semifinals. I got to hear how they had to count the ballot three times because the results between first and second place were so close. And for the first time in six months, we heard in second place, Kay Price Lindsay. She was beaten by a young preppy American speaker by the name of Ryan Avery, who two days later became the world champion. But what my sister showed me in her journey was that a speech contest is not just for someone who's gonna win the world championships. A speech contest is for any Toastmaster who has entered this organization to grow and learn and become more. And so I'll tell you what I did the next year. I didn't enter. <laughs> I was like, that is too much work. I'm not doing it. I didn't enter the following year. I eventually entered in 2015 and I came third at the division level. And then I didn't enter for six years. Now, I got really lucky this year that I entered with a speech that took me all the way to semifinals, that I worked with more than 200 Toastmasters around the world giving me feedback, and I worked with previous world champions like Lance Miller and Prez Vazilev to make me the best speaker I could be. But I have to ask myself, would I have only won now? Couldn't I have done this six years ago if I'd bought my ticket, if I'd put my name in the hat? This year has completely transformed me as a speaker. But I want to encourage every single member of Toasted, if you have done your level two pathways and completed it, and you want to buy your ticket and put your name in the hat, what I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you two things. The first thing I can guarantee you is there will only be one world champion of public speaking next year. But the other thing I can guarantee you is every single person who enters this contest will grow. One person is guaranteed to win everyone else is guaranteed to grow. And so you can't enter this contest going, 
oh, you know what, Verity won. You must only do it if you're going all the way to the end. You enter it because you go, I'm going to give the best speech I've ever given at my club. And if that speech is good enough and you've worked hard on it enough that you get to hear those magic words in first place, then you get to work on that speech again at area. You get to seek out a mentor or a guide in the club to help you. And you use the journey to develop yourself as a speaker, as a Toastmaster, and as a person. So I really just want to encourage all my fellow Toastmasters, don't enter this contest if the only thing you're wanting to do is win, because that's what I did in 2012. This year, I entered wanting to grow. I just got lucky that along the way and with all the growth, I got this little guy. But I hope we bring it back to Toasted. But regardless, I just want to encourage you to buy your tickets, put your name in the hat, and let it take you on the journey it takes you. Because I will be here to support every single one of our members on that contest journey. Let's get out there and shine. Mwah. Oh, Verity, thank you so much. I'm sure you sold many tickets in this moment. And I hope we all can be together in this hat and take part in next year's coming contest. Verity will be so proud of us if we all take part and if she can support us and help us and help us to grow. Thank you, Verity, for this wonderful, wonderful speech and your valor of courage, or it's the same, same word, <laughs> um, of your value, value of life, a very courageous person you are. And now I would like to ask the timekeeper, Vanya, to give us her report. Um, so Jen has eight minutes, so one minute too much, but it was a very nice speech. Thanks, Jen. And Verity, I wasn't sure if I should keep your time or it was 10 minutes. Uh, so a little bit, oh, sorry. It was meant to be 10 minutes. Okay. I don't know okay. if you saw okay. that. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, that's it. Oh, thank you, Vanya. I will never forget when Vanya timed that evening when um, Ellen um, committee was with us. And she timed him and told him the time and he was over time. It was so funny. And he was like, what? What is she talking to me? So I would like to do something important. And that is before we go into our break, I would like to speak a toast to South Africa and her people. And I always add another thing to her speakers because Verity is with us. So if you like to unmute yourself, Take a drink. I hope it's a nice stiff one, but this is water. Yeah. And let's toast, let's toast to South Africa and her people and speakers. To South, South Africa, Africa, Africa and, and people. Speakers. Speakers. I would like you now, I would like to invite you to a 10 minute break. Uh, no, wait one second. I can't be so generous because I've taken time up. 1918. So we have we should only have, let's do a five minute break. Is it okay with all of you? We have to catch a little bit up with time. I'm always too generous with it. We are meeting at 20 past seven. Thank you to all of you. Thank you, Gabrielle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome back again, everyone. It's my pleasure to kick off the second half of uh, tonight's evening. As I welcome back our president and our Toastmaster for tonight, Gabrielle. Please put your hands together for her. We are going into the second round of this evening, which is a big fun part of our Toasted meeting because it will be table topics. Before we come to table topics, we are we are having uh, our evaluators or our one evaluator um, evaluating the speech. Then we have the timekeeper's report and then comes the table topics. I found a very nice quote from Anais Nin about core, uh, courage. Life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. Life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. Anais Nin. 
May I now hand over to our first evaluator, Shireen O'Neill, who has, uh, is going to evaluate Janet's speech. Thank you, Shireen, over to you. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Jen, where's Jen? Can we highlight Jen so I can see Jen? <laughs> Jen, um, wow, thank you so much for a really, really brilliant speech. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And as your evaluator this evening, I need to give you some positives and some feedback in terms of what you can work on. So Jen, I love the way you used your hands this evening. It was an absolutely great way of using your hands, especially at the part where you were knocking and you actually showed us how you were knocking. I felt that the pace of your speech was absolutely amazing. And I loved how you shared the pillars of wealth and really the way that you shared it for me, I felt like I was with you in each of your stories of each of those pillars of the wealth. It was brilliant. I love the fact that you used humor. It was lovely. It loosened things up a bit. And in actual fact for yourself, I saw the nerves calm down a little bit when you started off with the first piece of humor. You laughed, which was also great, which means that you were having fun and enjoying your speech. I really felt like I was in your stories. I would like to encourage you in future when you have beautiful questions, you started off with questions and you ended off with questions to use a little bit more intention when you ask those questions. So ask the questions and possibly pause so that it gives the audience an opportunity to think about what the question is and possibly what their answer could be. The question that you asked, what is the first thing you would do? And then you ended off by saying, what do you think you can contribute to the world? There were such powerful questions and I think it would have been a light bulb moment for us to just get an opportunity to think about that answer. I did see that you were nervous. For your second speech, you did amazingly, but the nerves did show up. And for me, it showed up in terms of your breath. So as much as your pace was amazing, you almost forgot to breathe. So when you were speaking, you could hear gasping when you wanted to take a breath. So sometimes we just need to slow it down and we need to remember to breathe. Do not apologize. At the beginning of your speech, you apologize to say, you know, this is your second speech and you're nervous and all of those kinds of things. Don't apologize because most times your audience don't even know. They wouldn't know if you didn't tell them. So sometimes we put the ideas into people's heads and that then sets the tone for your speech. As you become more comfortable, you will learn to you know your speech off by heart. So for me, I did notice that you were reading a lot with regards to your speech, but I think as you perfect your speeches and you speak more, you will be really brilliant. And because I resonate with you in terms of the first pillar of wealth that you gave us, may God continue to bless you, Jen and all your speeches. Thank you very much. Shireen, what you say always, as we say in German, it has hands and feet, it fits together. Thank you for this wonderful evaluation. And then I would like to come to the timekeeper's report. Vanya, would you please give us the time? Well, Shireen, it was, yeah, um, it was a very nice evaluation. Thank you. And this is three minutes and five seconds. Thank you, Vanya. And now we come to that part we always love, we're excited about, but we fear as well. This is the part where each of us always needs courage, no matter how far they are in their career and pathways. Please welcome the Table Topics Master of tonight, Richard. Richard Scott, please introduce yourself and your role. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Good evening, club, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Toastmasters, Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Toastmasters wants to challenge members to develop their impromptu communication skills 
and to think on your feet. So we are going to give a few members the opportunity to speak at each meeting. We do this with table topics. Table topics is designed to teach you to listen, think on your feet, organize, and then speak. Your response needs to be at least one minute and no more than two. You will see a green, then a yellow, and then a red signal at two minutes means time to wrap it up. Those who speak on time qualify for the best table topics award. Don't forget to use the word of the day, valor. So as I conduct table topics, I will ask you a question first, and then I will call on someone to respond if I don't see a show of hands, which I'm hoping you all participate. This way, everybody listens and everybody starts thinking about the response and then remember to answer in one or two minutes. Tonight, I will be asking questions about cinema and the movies. I'm sure we have all been there. So the first question would be, put it in the chat. Great movies create amazing soundtracks. So think about a movie that you enjoyed where when you think of the name, the music comes back to you immediately. So has, whether it be sound of music, something more modern, who remembers the soundtrack from a movie they saw? Unmute Claire and go for it. <laughs> okay. So my movie is Sweet Home Alabama. It's a practically it's a love story, but it's just beautiful about second chances. And it has some amazing country music in it. And it's my all-time, one of my all-time favorites. I've watched it, I don't know how many times. But the music is just, it's upbeat and it's got all the ups and downs and the, you know, the stresses and moments in a, in a movie. But it's, yeah, it's just a beautiful movie. And whenever I hear that soundtrack I, or one of the songs from it, that's one of the movies that I go, oh, yes, that's my, that's my movie. So, yeah, just that second chances, you know, things don't go always go right the way, go right the, the first time. But sometimes you get a second chance in certain things that, and you just hit it out of the park. So that's my, that's one of my favorite soundtracks and favorite movies. Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Thank you, Claire. I'll put your genre down as love stories. <laughs> Talking about genres, what genre of movie do you like and why? Action, thriller, horror, musical, love story, biography. And if you're going to tell me the genre, please give me an example of one show that stood out. Anyone? Daniel's got his hand up. Hello, yes. So my favorite genre of movies is specifically superhero movies. And um, when I think about superhero movies that I love, and superhero movies that uh, inspire me, make me think of courage and valor, I think back to the most recent, um, uh, most recent Avengers movie, and it was after the movie where Thanos had had really won, and the, the one before ended very sadly with the bad guy winning. And then in this most recent one, uh, you got to see all these superheroes that I grew up watching. I was about ten years old when the first Iron Man movie came out, so I watched all the MCU up to this Avengers Endgame. And so as I was watching Avengers Endgame, it came to that. Uh, that moment where Thor, Captain America, and Iron Man stood against Thanos for a rematch, for a second chance to battle him. And it was really just a, a ferocious, wonderful battle. 
But after that battle ended, Thanos had looked like he had won. And there was a moment where Captain America had been beaten up and his you know, indestructible shield had been broken. And he got up and he stood up and he put his arm, he pulled the thing on his shield to put his arm back into socket. And he stood there and just, I remember I was watching it in the movie theaters and I was so enraptured. And I was like, what is gonna happen? Something has to happen. And then there was that moment where uh, there was a reference back, to, a call back to one of the old movies where his friend said, Cap, I'm on your left. And then all the portals started opening up and it was just this, this moment where his courage and his valor had paid off. And you know the armies met in the final battle. And of course the good guys ended up winning. And so because of that, that hero's journey that you get to see the characters go through, that is why superhero movies are my favorite. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. We look forward to your membership, another USA transplant. So it'll be nice having you here. What is your favorite movie of all time and why do you like it? That movie for me is my password, my secret question on all my websites, my login, whatever. So once you know it, you can pretty much hack my life. But for each of us, we have one that be it a black or white or a modern movie. Tell us about your favorite and why. Thank you, John. My favorite movie of all time is called It's a Wonderful Life, starring Jimmy Stewart. And I love that movie because it's about a man who thinks he's a failure. He isn't able to go off to war like his brother. He stays home and runs a business and raises a family and helps people in his community. And at the end of his life, when things are going tough, he loses some valor and thinks he's a failure, but people in his community and his family, they step up with valor and they show him that he is a person of great courage and a hero. And for these reasons, I love that movie. Thank you, John. <laughs> Jimmy Stewart knocked it out of the park there. How do you choose which movie to watch? Do you choose it by the genre, the director, by all the gossip, by the reviews you read, or do you only go to movies where you got free tickets? How do you choose your theater and movie experience? Anyone? Chantel's got her hand up. Oh, uh, Chantel, welcome. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. I must confess to not being the most discerning movie watcher ever. I will watch just about anything, but there are a few draw cards that I, I just find unmissable. And in terms of choosing by the actor, definitely if Daniel Day-Lewis is in it, I've got to watch it. So some of my favorite movies of all time are those with him in it, especially There Will Be Blood. And that's just because there is something so captivating about seeing someone so passionately committed to what they're doing that the line between their individual personality and the character that they're embodying is so blurred that you almost can't tell. And given what you heard about his approach to acting and his method acting, I imagine that he experiences some of the same confusion that the audience does. So I think it's an act of tremendous valor to step into fulfilling a role and living up to audience expectations so completely that the person watching is truly transported. Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Thank you, Chantel, and welcome. Here's my favorite. Tell me who your favorite actor is and what earned him that spot and I won't let up but the name's Bond James Bond like it's shaken not stirred other than that you'll never guess who I like but 
each of us has a favorite actor or actress that earned that spot. Paul, did you raise your hand? Go ahead. Well, my favorite actor is Sylvester Stallone because of the story behind Rocky. When he mm. started uh, Rocky, he wanted to be the scriptwriter and he wrote the whole script and he was really bankrupt. So he wants to sell the script. And I think uh, the first offer was about $30,000 and he was bankrupt. He even sold the jewelry of his wife. And before the weeks before Rocky, he sold his dog because he could not even maintain his dog. Now he sold his dog and it was going forward and backward. And they even offered him $300,000 for the script. And he said, no, I want to be the star in Rocky. Then the company uh, went to agreement to say, listen, if you want to be the star, then we will share also um, the risk. So they gave him $30,000. Now with the $30,000, he first wanted to buy back his dog. So he went back to the shop in front of the shop and he stayed for two days in front of the shop, waiting for the guy to pass by his dog. He sold his dog for, I think, $50. The guy passed by and he wants to have at least $200. He paid up to $500 to have his dog back. Now that dog uh, was also part of Rocky One. And the person who sold the dog back, he wants also to be in the movie. So he's one of the guys who was in the movie together with the dog. And I think he's so passionate that the guy was believing himself, making the best and refused the offer of $300,000 to be in his own movie, the movie and the script that he wrote in less than 24 hours after seeing, um, I think, a combat be between Muhammad Ali and somebody else. And this is really inspiring because the guy got a goal and a vision in his life and will never, ever, ever abandon his goal and his vision. Thank you very much, Mr. Topol Topics. Thank you, Paul. That is one of the famous true stories and so fantastic. Very inspirational. I'm going to ask. Um, Check I'm going to pick on someone yeah. here. Paul, we have Check one, Check one guest. Shaquille would like. Yes, to. could you join us, Shaquille, from the Caribbean? Uh, your question would be: Do you tr try and watch movies that win awards? Do you think that awards really? demonstrate or reflect the worth of a movie because a lot of times awards movies that win awards are blockbuster duds and ones that don't win awards are famous so what are your thoughts on that how do you choose your movie thank you to the table topics master for such a very intriguing question fellow toast masters and guests Personally, when I look at movies, I do not care whether they win awards or not. But sometimes when these movies win some sort of inter international award, they get, a, they get a hype. They get a hype. But when you actually look at these movies, you are wondering, is this food that really about? because of a war that they win. The hype that it gets, it's not worth looking at the movie. So for me, I was basically watch a movie on the base, on the following one. It must be interesting. The cast of the movie must play, be shown and the solution must be there. Because if I'm going to watch a movie based on if it's extra award, it's not going to, it's not going to create or give that the main reason why I am looking at it. Only looking at it because persons say because of the because of the award, I am going to look at it. No, I can't do it. Because suppose I look at this movie and then I realize that the movie is no good. So maybe these movies are getting these awards for the wrong reasons. 
So therefore, to answer your question, I can, I will, I do not look at movies or watch them because of any odds that they would have won. So the answer is no, Mr. Table Talk. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Lewis. And with that, I want to thank you all for your participation and your varied thoughts. And I would like to return the meeting to our Toastmaster. Thank you all. Thank you, Richard. I think this is a big round of applause for Richard for such a fun and um, an inspiring and far reaching uh, table topic master he has been. And I love the captivating insight we got into each and every person why they like movies and whom they like and um, all the different levels you have shown us there. That was another very nice aspect of those table topics. And congratulations to the valor of our guests who have um, come forward and taken part. Great applause to you. And now I would like to ask our grammarian and listener, Nicholas Jackson, to give his report. Evening once again, members and our many guests. I would like to hand back to Vanya to do a timekeeper's report, and then I'll run the poll for our best impromptu speaker. So Vanya, if you can do that, and then I'll give my grammarian's report. Okay. Um, Claire has one minute and 20 seconds. Daniel had one minute and 45 seconds. John had 55 seconds. Paul had one minute and 55 seconds. Uh, Chantel, sorry, she was somewhere, I think I wrote a little bit wrong, but uh, one minute. And Shaquille had one minute and 44 seconds. Thank you everyone for voting. We have a result which we will share at the end of the meeting. For my grammarian's report, the word of the day was used by Daniel, Shireen, Verity, Chantal, Gabriel, and John. So a big round of applause to everyone that used the word valor. For the listening role, I'd like you to either just use your spacebar to quickly shout out who said these phrases, or you can unmute yourself and mute yourself. To start, who used the alliteration, but waited with bated breath? Verity. Well done. Who has a crush on Daniel Day-Lewis? Chantel. Chantel. Correct. So, Gabrielle and Verity, you may not answer anymore. Who's the, who refers to Google as their best friend? Janet's best friend. That's correct, Richard. Whose favorite song is Sweet Home Alabama? Claire. Correct, John. Who is going to be our new USA transplant? Daniel. <laughs> well done, John. Daniel. And who used the lovely expression, life shrinks or expands according to one's courage? Gabriel. Gabriel. Correct. Who recommends watching the movie Blindside? Daniel Vasquez, end of speech. Correct, Richard, you may not answer. That's two now. Who used the expression erupt with joy? No one, no takers? 
Shireen. No, it was Verity. And who used the expression hands and feet? Gabrielle. Gabrielle. All right. Let's just do two more. Who used the lovely, I think this is um, personification, uh, dance with the chance of failure? Verity. Verity. Yes, correct. And who loves to fill in the gap? It was during our break. Someone said that their purpose is to fill in the gap. Paul? Okay. Daniel. Well done, everybody, for participating in the listening role of the meeting. I'll hand back to our president. Thank you, Nick. You listened very well. And it, it's so much fun, this listener role, um, because we have to be so much more attentive. And then, uh, yeah, we, it comes back to us and it stays then. Thank you so much. I would like now to come to Lori as our OM and AIR counter um, to report back. And Lori, I hope you are with us again. <laughs> yeah. I am. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster and Madam President. It was a great evening for the ah counter. You didn't keep me too busy. Gabrielle, Nick, Verity, John, and Chantel, you had a clean score scoreboard. And we had Vanya, you had three ums and one so. Shireen, you had one um. Jenneth, you had one ah and two ums. Richard, one ah and one um. Claire, you had one repeat and two you knows. Daniel, you had one ah, uh, two um, one so, and one repeat. Paul, one um, and one so, and Shaquille, one so, and one repeat. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. It always requires a lot of focus and concentration. I'm glad you didn't put me in that role. Um, so now we come to the end of our meeting. And is that the right one? Yeah. As a Toastmaster, I would like to thank all of you for your great participation. It was fun. It was inspiring. It was courageous. And it had a lot of valor. I would like to bring Maya Angelou into the play with one of her quotes. One isn't necessarily born with courage, but one is born with potential. Without courage, we cannot practice any other virtue with consistency. We can't be kind, true, merciful, generous, or honest. I think all of you are courageous people to be here each time, to step forward, to show your heart, to be authentic. What a beautiful community. And I would like, as the president, to thank the Toastmaster. Um, she has to learn a couple of things like speaking, oh no, that was the president, <laughs> like keeping a time, but she will learn. It's one of her problems, but it will get better with time. Huh? Choose that role again. And then as the president, yeah. Great, thank you to all of you again. And this time we are now at um, not only having courage uh, for our life, but we need, as Verity said already, the courage to buy a ticket. And that ticket is for the contest. And I would like to warmly welcome our district director, Terry. Area, area. Uh, area sorry, I'm, um, yeah. <laughs> area uh, director, Terry Winship. It's really an honor to have you with us. She is the right person. It's wonderful that she will tell us now what is about this contest and take hopefully some of our fear away and make us really curious and courageous to step next year up to speak. So, Please, a warm welcome to Terry. 
It was really, really lovely to be here tonight. I've been visiting several clubs in the last couple of weeks. And what amazes me is every club has a different feel. Every club kind of follows slightly different rules. Um, but everywhere I go, I find that Toastmasters are always so warm and so welcoming. And well done to your club, a really, really great meeting. So I'm not going to tell you too much about the contest because I think Verity did it all this um, earlier, talking about the contest. But what I will say to you is, instead of buying a ticket, I'm going to say, take the chance. Because when you enter a competition, what you do is you actually put your best foot forward. So if you're just doing a talk in the club, you'll work on it and you'll prepare it. But it's not quite that same when you've got the edge and you're competing against people and you're putting yourself out there because you really do do slightly a better speech. So I would encourage you all to try. It's not about winning. Yes, it's amazing to win. And we're very proud of Verity and we're very proud of our first African. And it is fantastic. But at the same time, if you've put yourself out there and you've tried harder, it is part of the journey and it is so, so beneficial. So I am going to encourage you all to enter your club one. And, and that has to be done by the end of January, February, February. And really it is worth the try. The, the um, topics are, are, are fairly simple. You can choose a speech between five and seven minutes. So choose one of your favorite speeches. Think about it over December. Come in January and craft it and work it a little bit. Make sure you've got a great opening, three stories and a close. Remember, if you're quoting someone, you need to let us know who that person is. And at least 70% of your speech must be original. We don't ever want disasters like plagiarism and, and stuff like that. And enjoy it. It's worth the try and put yourself forward. So thank you. And nice to see you all and meet you all. And I will see you next year again. Thank you, Terry. And it's so good to have met you. So next year, it makes it easier if you know who is there in the in the judges box or in the organization. Thank you so very much and good luck as well to you in the coming year. Lovely to have met you, thank you. Speaking about the contest, which is next year, we will give you um, those dates as well, but just get prepared interiorly. And then our what I would like to mention as well is our next meeting on the 15th right on the 13th on the 13th uh, monday the 13th of december it's going to be a hybrid meeting and all of those who have been here for a hybrid meeting now it's a lot of joy and it's so nice to connect with each other and finally meet and all these oms and ahs at the door. Oh, I didn't think you were that tall and I didn't think you were that small and I didn't think you were that wide and all these things come up and it's so much fun. So please register with our VPE, Lori, if you would like to come. And this um, moment is there as well to hand over to Lori um, and she will ask for roles or it, I leave it now up to her, please Lori. Will you come on board and tell about next meeting? Great, Great. thank you, Gabrielle. <clears throat> so we usually, uh, a, a week or two before our next meeting, we look for, for individuals who wanna take on a role. All the roles were explained this evening. And if there is something of interest that you'd like to take on to in, in a specific role, then reach out to me and we will sign you up for that role. You also find helpful scripts and information and one of us, uh, between one of us on the committee, we will help you prepare for that role. And I think Richard did an amazing job as the first uh, table topics and it was just unique and fun. And that's what we want to create in our meetings. So if there is something of interest, we have the Toastmaster, uh, which is, uh, you can set the tone for the evening. You have the um er counter, the grammarian listener, which is a lot of fun to select the word, to listen to the speeches and play a little game at the end. Our timekeeper, of course, evaluators, they are always quite critical in every meeting to 
give that solid constructive feedback to improve your your speeches and yes and and that's it so please reach out to me if you don't i'll reach out to you <laughs> so thanks so much and thanks for a great evening tonight gabrielle back to you oh, adam toastmaster thank you Lori. so inspiring when you call us up and please listen to Lori very carefully and please help her. Talking about events, I would like to point out an event which is tomorrow evening. Division D is having an open house at 6.30 and we are all invited. So I will put that invitation out on our Toasted WhatsApp group and maybe you would like to come and see how another club is presenting and their very interesting themes for the evening. Then our next point is our awards. Is that right, Nicholas? Can I say that already? Our table topics uh, winner. Um, we will give a drum roll, please, if you want to unmute yourself, and then the winner will be announced. Tonight, we have a tie. Daniel Walden and Chantal Walden. So none of our members took the award. Well done to our guests. Well done. Woo -hoo! Thank you very much. Is it back to me? Nick, am I on? Yes, you may wrap it up. Okay, good. I would like from, I can't ask everybody now how they enjoyed the evening, but maybe somebody from our guests who hasn't spoken yet, maybe you would like to let us know how it was for you and whether it would be worthwhile for you to come back and whether you take something home. So is any of you ready for a little impromptu goodbye and give us a, yeah. Shaquille. Thank you, Madam President and fellow Toastmasters. This was a senior club meeting, and I must say I really enjoyed the meeting. And I definitely would be back despite what time frame is. You guys are actually six hours ahead of us. So right now it's about 2 p.m. Our time, it is already about 7 or 8 p.m. your time. So despite our time for us, definitely we'll try to visit again. And let me take this opportunity to say thank you to my fellow club member who is in this meeting for giving me the opportunity to visit your club. So I definitely will visit again. Thank you so much, Shakila. What a nice compliment. And hello to the Caribbean and have a good day. I see Julia is putting her hand up. Julia, a little commentary as a guest. Yes, I wanted to be Vela and uh, speak and take the ticket, <laughs> and I missed it. <laughs> so, yeah, just, uh, just a short thank you so much. It's now the second time I visit, and I'm looking forward to a third time. And by then, um, I hope to be a member. Super exciting. I send you much love from Germany. I, I do my best to open the borders again mm -hmm. so that we have all these beautiful people back in South Africa. And I hope this plane will take me then on the 6th of January back to you. And I'm looking forward to have then a person, uh, a hybrid meeting with you, Gabriel, in your beautiful house and as a wonderful um, host. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Und fröhliche Weihnachten, Julia. Merry Christmas ja. to you in there. Wir hören uns ja noch nächste Woche. Ja, yeah, ja. Yeah. It's on the 13th of December you come back to us. And is there anybody else who would like to speak a few words before we are closing off? Otherwise, if I don't see a hand and I don't see everybody, but um, let me just... Gabriel. Who's there? Is it Andiga? Yes, come, yeah. please. Yes, Adinga. Yes. Chantal, what I've asked if you have a friends group, you mentioned a meeting that will be taking place tomorrow, but 
we do not have access to your WhatsApp group and would like to be a part of it as much as we can, please. I made a note, Adinga, and I've got your number. I got your email. I will send it right away when I'm finished, when we're finished here. That's absolutely. Okay, thank you. Good. But it was so lovely to have the Caribbean here and to have all the other guests. We are really international and what joy is that for us to know how we are all connecting around the globe. And Verity has connected our club around the world as well. It's a, a big contribution to her. My dear friends, guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, my last quote is unknown. Don't get discouraged. It is often the last key in the bunch that opens the lock. Don't get discouraged. It is often the last key in the bunch that opens the lock. Have a happy time. Good days. No matter what happens in this country, we are here. We are positive and we are friendly and kind and we hug all the best until the 13th of December here in the house to a hybrid meeting. Lots of awesome. love. Awesome, well done. Thank you, thank you.